probability equation is looking at the variety of things that we could do to change kid behavior and, and thinking about the, the fact that some things simply work better than other things. So the probability equation is saying that given a certain type of kid and that you want that kid to do a certain thing, there should be a set of things that we know offer a high probability of that happening and a large set of things that offer us a lower probability. And the idea of the equation is that we should be using that equation to talk about probability of getting a success. So that if you say, I have a kid in the fourth grade with this level of skill in math and this level of skill in reading and who has these issues going on, and I want that kid to do this, we should be able to then say, given who your kid is and what you want him to do, these are the sets of things that you should be doing because those things give you the highest probability. Now there may be somebody out there that would say, you should do this wacky crazy thing because I did that once with a kid and it worked. And what we would want to say to that is, that means it worked for one kid somewhere one time, whereas we have other stuff that's worked for lots of kids, lots of places. Let's try the high probability things and if they don't work, then we can bring in and try one of the low probability things. And what we found in the research is really regardless of what that thing is with kids, whether they're elementary, middle, high, uh, at grade level, below grade level, et cetera, et cetera, the set of things that create the highest probability for success are basically the same. They are effective instructional practices. They are curriculum, what we're teaching, how we're teaching it, how long it takes to teach it, how we break it down, how we present it. Do we present it in big groups or small groups or one-on-one? -on -one? Do, how do we arrange the classroom? What kind of routines do we use? What kind of feedback do we use and how often? Prompts, engagement, reminders. Those are all instructional decisions. And what the literature tells us is that instructional interventions give us a higher effect size, a higher probability for changing behavior than anything else we could do. So if we're looking for an 80% probability of success with what we're asking kids to do, which is where we should be if we want them to keep doing it without us. If we can create a situation where they're successful 80%, we'll predict they'll keep doing it. So <clears throat> how do we create this set of teacher practices that make the 80% happen? And we'll have to tweak and mess with, well, how do we give that instruction? What example should we use? And how should we engage depending on who the kid is? But these things don't change. We're going to have to engage that kid no matter what if we want a high probability of success. How we engage them depends on who the kid is. If the kid you know, really doesn't like speaking with adults at all, then we're going to have to figure out a different way to engage them. But we can't just say, well, we won't engage because the engagement is what creates the probability for the kid being successful. So it's really the, the equation itself is really very simple. It just says, for whatever kid we're talking about, use these things, but use them in a way that meets that kid's needs to create a high probability of success with whatever it is you want them to do. And really, you know, so it comes down to these basic steps. Figure out what you want that kid to do, which is C, then figure out where that kid is right now and what their issues are, which is A, and then figure out how you're going to use that same set of things that you're going to use no matter what, but how you use them given A and C to make it work.